Hey guys, welcome to another Final Cut Pro tutorial. In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of Final Cut Pro X in less than 15 minutes. So if you're new to Final Cut Pro and you want to get the hang of the interface and find out where everything is, how to do basic edits, adding effects, transitions, adding titles, how to export and backup your projects, then stick around because these basics will get you up to speed. first thing you'll need to know is where to find everything in Final Cut Pro. So let's run through the Final Cut Pro interface. Let's start with the browser window, which is where you'll manage your libraries, events, and projects, and everything else that you import into your project. Next up is the viewer window, which is where your edit will play back. And then we have the timeline, which is where all of the editing is going to take place. This is where you'll drop footage and edit it all together. Moving on to the inspector window, and this panel changes every time you click on a different clip to show different properties that you can change. I go through this as well as everything else in this video in my course, which I'll talk about at the end. It's important to know how Final Cut Pro manages your files, so I'll quickly run through that. In Final Cut Pro, you have libraries, events, and projects. You can think of a library as your entire project, an event as sort of a subfolder, and projects are essentially your timelines. It's also important to know that Final Cut Pro manages your imported files, whether that's video, images, sound effects, or music, in two ways. Let me show you what I mean. Click on Final Cut Pro, select Preferences, select the Import tab, and take a look at the first option. By default, Final Cut Pro will copy any files that you import into your library file. What that means is that if you import 100 gigabytes of footage, that 100 gigabytes will be on your hard drive wherever your footage is located, as well as in your library. This wastes hard drive space, and it also makes it more difficult to back up your projects when your edit's done. So I would recommend that you change this setting to leave files in place. What this does is tells Final Cut Pro to reference the footage from its original location and not to copy the files into the library file. There are three types of files that Final Cut Pro generates, and they are optimized media, proxy media, and render files. Creating optimized media transcodes your footage into Apple's ProRes 422 codec, which improves editing performance. Proxy files can be generated, which are essentially medium quality versions of your video files, which also helps to improve performance. The third type of file that Final Cut Pro generates is render files. Rendering creates temporary video and audio files that Final Cut Pro would otherwise struggle to play back in real time. The last thing you need to know about your Final Cut Pro libraries is how they're saved. You can't save the project manually as you work on it, but Final Cut Pro saves the library file automatically. It also creates backups in the movies folder on your hard drive in case something goes wrong. There are three ways to import footage into Final Cut Pro. Firstly, you can either go to File, Import, Media, or you can use the shortcut Command I. You then navigate to the footage you want to import, select it, and click on Import. Secondly, you can select all the files you want to import in Finder and drag and drop those files into the event. Lastly, you can select all the files in Finder that you want to import and drag and drop them directly onto your timeline. Now that you have your footage in Final Cut Pro, let's talk about how to edit the clips in the timeline using the different tools. You can access the various tools by clicking on this drop-down arrow over here. Let's run through the tools and what they do, starting with the three that I think are the most important. The Select tool is used to move clips around the timeline and to select clips, allowing you to change the properties of a clip or its effects. To switch to the Select tool, you can use the shortcut key A. If you hover over the beginning or the end of a clip, the tool temporarily changes to the Trim tool, which allows you to adjust the beginning or the ending of a clip. The Trim tool can be activated using the drop-down list or with the shortcut key T. With the Trim tool activated, you can move your cursor in between two clips to adjust the edit point between the clips like this. You can also keep the duration of the clip the same, but change the start and end point of the clip using the trim tool like this. Next up is the blade tool, which is used to make cuts in your clips, and it can be activated by selecting it in the drop-down list or by using the shortcut key B. With the blade tool activated, you can go through your timeline making multiple cut points like this. And you can select the parts you don't want to use using the select tool, and then hit the backspace key to delete that part of the clip. Those are the three I use the most, but let's quickly go over some of the others as well. The Position tool can be activated using the shortcut key P, and it's useful when you want to move clips around your primary storyline. With the Position tool activated, notice how I can move the clip exactly where I want it to be, even if that means overwriting part of another clip. The Range Selected tool can be activated using the shortcut key R, and I find it useful in two ways. The first is that you can determine how long a specific section of your edit is by selecting a range and then looking over here to see exactly how many minutes, seconds, and frames your selection is. The second is to select a range and then change the volume of the audio. You simply select the range of the audio where you want to change the volume and then pull it up or down like this. 
The zoom tool can be activated using the shortcut key Z and it allows you to zoom in and out of certain parts of your timeline. You simply click on your timeline to zoom into a specific point on your timeline or to zoom out, hold down the Alt key and click again. You can also use the zoom tool to zoom into a selection. Click and drag across the area you want to zoom into and Final Cut Pro will fill your timeline with that selection. I personally use shortcuts to zoom in and out of my timeline. To zoom in, you hit Command and the plus key and to zoom out, you hit Command and the minus key. Or you can zoom in or out to fill your timeline using Shift Z. The hand tool is one that I almost never use, but you can activate it using the shortcut key H and it allows you to click and drag to move around your timeline like this. As you can see, I love using shortcuts. I find that it speeds up my workflow and it's something that I recommend you learn to do as well. If you want to check out a few more shortcuts, I did do a video which you can find linked down below or in the card in the corner. Let's dive into the clip properties that you can adjust for the clips on your timeline. You can access the properties of a clip by selecting it and looking over here at the inspector window. You can change the opacity of a clip using this slider over here. You can adjust the size of the clip using the scale sliders. You can straighten the skew horizon by changing the angle of rotation. But bear in mind, you might be able to see the black edges underneath the clip. So to fix that, you can adjust the scale of the clip to fill that space. You can also adjust the position of a clip on the X and Y axis. The crop property is pretty straightforward, but here you can adjust the sliders to trim the clip from the left, the right, the top, or the bottom. If we scroll further down here, you'll find the stabilization section where you can stabilize shaky footage. Those are just some of the properties you can change, but they are probably the most commonly used ones. Final Cut Pro comes with a bunch of titles that you can find in the browser over here. You can simply drag and drop titles from the browser window onto your timeline. Over here, you'll find the video and audio effects. There are a bunch of different categories of effects and you can apply them by simply dragging and dropping them onto your clips. Next to the effects icon, you can access your transitions. You can apply transitions to cut points in the timeline by dragging and dropping directly onto the clips. You can adjust the properties of a title, effect or transition by selecting it and going over to the inspector window, just like you would adjust properties for a clip like I showed you earlier. For titles, you can come in and adjust the text, the font, color and a lot of other things. You can access the video effects over here, where you can change a bunch of different parameters which will differ depending on the effect you've applied. You can make color corrections over here by simply dragging the sliders up and down. Next to that, you'll see a speaker where you can adjust audio effect properties. Speaking of audio, let's talk about a few audio basics in Final Cut Pro. It's important to be able to monitor the audio levels of your edit. You can do this with the audio meters, but it's really small over here in the viewer window. By simply clicking on the meters, you can open up an expanded view to the right of your timeline. To adjust the volume of any audio in your timeline, grab the volume line and drag it up or down. You can also adjust the volume in the inspector window by dragging the slider left or right, or by typing in a specific dB value. You can create audio fades by hovering over either end of a clip where you'll see a small handle pop up which you can drag to create a fade. So instead of having the music start suddenly like this, it will gradually increase in volume like this. If you want to have a bit more control over the audio in your edit, it's important to understand keyframing. Let's assume you have a few shots that have been cut to music and then you have some dialogue. If you play it back as it is currently, started our second full day here in Rome in the Vatican City. You can't hear the dialogue clearly because the music is just too loud. This is where keyframing comes in. I'll put my playhead over here a little bit before the dialogue comes in and select the music. Then I'll head over to the inspector and create a keyframe. Now I can move forward in my timeline to just after the dialogue starts, making sure that my music track is still selected and then create another keyframe. I can simply click on the keyframe icon or just drag the volume slider to where I want it to be and another keyframe will be created automatically. Let's play that back to show you what the keyframes are doing to the music track. So we've started our second full day here in Rome in the Vatican City. We've got to By now, you've learned how to put an edit together, add transitions, titles, effects, and mix your audio. And now it's time to export your final video. Let's have a look at the export preferences by heading over to Final Cut Pro, Preferences, and then selecting the Destinations tab. You'll see that you have a bunch of different presets here. The one I recommend that you use for everything is the master file preset because then you have more control over the final codec than you do with some of the other presets. Let's select that and for the settings, I want to have both video and audio selected and I want my video codec to be H.264. 
It's a very popular codec and it's also the recommended codec when uploading to YouTube. Since that is always the way I want to export my videos, I want to set master file to my default export method. I can do that by right clicking on master file and selecting make default. That allows me to use a shortcut to export my timeline. So let's close down the preferences window, go back to my timeline, and now I can hit command E to export with my default settings. Hit next and choose where to save the file on your hard drive. You can also open up the background tasks window to see the progress. The last step once your project is complete is to clean up and back up your project. During the editing process, Final Cut Pro is going to generate a bunch of render files, some of which will be used in the final export, and some of which are used in the editing process and then stored on your drive, even though they're no longer needed. I have a massive project that I was working on, and you can see here that the project is 1.06 terabytes. You can delete all these unnecessary files to free up space on your hard drive by opening the library in Final Cut Pro, and once opened, you can select it in the browser window, then go to File, and then select Delete Generated Library Files. Here you can choose to delete all of the render files, the optimized media, and the proxy media. Let's select all of the boxes and make sure that all render files is selected and hit OK. It might take a few seconds to process, but once it's done, let's head back on over to Finder to see how much space we've saved. The library is now only 5.93 gigabytes. One last important thing to know how to do is how to relink missing files. If you move footage from one drive to another, you'll get a missing file error message like this. You can relink these files to tell Final Cut Pro where the files are now located. You can do that by selecting the event in the browser window and going over to File and selecting Relink Files. You'll have the option to relink all the files or only the missing files. I'm going to select Missing Only and choose Locate All. You can just point Final Cut Pro in the right direction by selecting a folder and letting Final Cut Pro do a search for you. Once done, you simply hit Relink and all of your files will be linked back to your project. There you have it guys, the basics of Final Cut Pro in less than 15 minutes. If you found this video interesting and you'd like to dive a little deeper, I've just released my first course called Learn the Basics of Final Cut Pro X in under one hour on Skillshare. This video is not sponsored by Skillshare in any way, I'm simply just using them to host my courses. So if you're totally new to editing or you have some editing experience but you're new to Final Cut Pro, then this is the class for you. Even if you're not new to Final Cut Pro, this class is packed with editing tips, shortcuts and time-saving tricks that I've learned in my career as a video editor. If you'd like to check that out, there'll be a link in the description below and you can sign up using that link and you'll get two months free, which is pretty cool. So with that said, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we post new videos. And we'll see you guys in the next one.